Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome to another session of our program Let us reflect Today we will bring you another topic which will inspire you to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Yes, today's topic is the essence of repentance. But before we move on to our main topic, following our routine, I would like to share with you a saying of Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, which expresses the importance of sending blessings Salawat in favor of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha has said, Adorn your gatherings by sending blessings in favor of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. So we are instructed by Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha that we send these gifts of salawat or these supplications of blessings in favor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because this action will adorn, decorate, beautify our gatherings. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad. Generally speaking, it is part of human nature to err. We make mistakes and we hope to learn from our mistakes. If those mistakes are sinful mistakes, if those mistakes are transgressions, then we should seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawbah or repentance is such a vast topic in our religion and there are so many encouraging verses of the Qur'an and hadith narrations which encourage us to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to abandon evil actions, to express remorse for any mistakes or any sinful uh, transgressions which took place. There is so much encouragement in our Sharia, in Islam, that if we consider, remember, and as our program is, let us reflect. If we reflect upon these points of excellence related to Tawbah, repentance, we shall be encouraged, we shall be motivated to renew our repentance. If we reflect upon the many verses of the Qur'an, and hadith traditions which mention the excellence of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through repentance, we shall be encouraged. We shall find it easier to ask for forgiveness for any transgressions or sins committed. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we learn to repent sincerely. We learn what a sincere repentance consists of and we remain steadfast upon our repentance as much as possible. Imam Nawawi alayhi rahmah, he mentions that it is wajib to seek forgiveness from sins. In a general sense, he mentions there are certain conditions that must be fulfilled to attain the acceptance of repentance. So repentance isn't just uh, saying astaghfirullah once and not even meaning it, or some people, they put their hands on their ears and they think, um, and they say tawbah or something like that, and they think that's enough for repentance. Imam Nawi alayhi rahmah, he mentions that there, if an individual has committed a sinful action, then generally speaking, there are three elements which must be fulfilled to attain the acceptance of repentance. The first point which he mentions is that the sin which was committed must be abandoned. Sometimes the sin could be continuous or it could be something which is ongoing. So the first point that he mentions for the acceptance of repentance is that the very sin should be abandoned straight away. One should come to a stop straight away. The second point that he mentions is 
one must express remorse. There must be an element of regret for committing that sin. If someone doesn't have any such feeling, then he's not really sincere in his repentance. So the second point mentioned here is there must be an element of remorse. And the third point that he mentions is that the person must make a firm intention not to perform or not to commit that sinful action again. So three elements for the acceptance of repentance are as follows. To abandon the sin, to express remorse for the sin, and to make a firm intention not to return to that sin, not to do that sin again. Then there's also a fourth element he clarifies in his commentary. He says there's a fourth element if the sin or violation is related to the rights of uh, an individual. For example, if someone has taken money from someone or someone was entrusted with money or, or a possession, now obviously, and he didn't return it, then part of his repentance would be to make up for that, to return whatever needs to be returned. If a person has offended another individual, for example, through uh, backbiting, talking about him behind his back, then the element, the added element would be that he would seek forgiveness from that individual. So we have the general conditions or the general elements that are needed for the acceptance of repentance, with the added element being that if a person violates the right of an individual, then his right must be fulfilled in whatever appropriate way as prescribed by the Sharia. Or if it's something offensive like backbiting, the person must seek forgiveness from the individual for his repentance to be complete. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to turn to him or return to him in repentance in the Quran. In one particular verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance, all of you, O believers, with this hope that you may attain success. Sayyiduna Ismail Haqqi alayhi rahma, he says um, in the commentary of this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded all believers to seek forgiveness from him and to repent. It's a clear command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because human beings are weak in nature and despite their efforts, they make mistakes. Imam Qushayri alayhi rahma, he says, that the one who is uh, in need of tawbah or repentance the most is the one who feels that there is no need for him to repent. So this is something that we find in society today. Some people, unfortunately, they uh, maybe it's through fulfilling certain obligations of the religion. Maybe it's because they are performing certain elements of the religion or fulfilling certain elements of the religion, this arrogance can creep into their heart and it grows and they might come to a situation where or they might reach a condition where they feel there is no need for them to repent for in their uh, opinion they've not done anything wrong or they've not transgressed in any way. This uh, according to what Imam Qushayri alayhi rahma has said Anyone who feels that he does not need to repent, he is the individual who needs to repent the most. So the one who feels that he doesn't need to repent, he needs to repent the most. And also the, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed the, the believers collectively here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just address the wrongdoers. So in the verse it was said, Ayyuhal mu'minun. The transgressors alone were not addressed. Believers collectively were addressed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is veiling the transgressors or covering the faults of the transgressors or saving them from some element of shame and embarrassment by generally giving the command to the believers that all believers, all of you, repent, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And within the Muslims, those who transgress or sin, they will repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and seek forgiveness from your Lord and turn to Him in repentance. And in the famous verse, He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا 
tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha. O you who believe, turn to Allah subhanahu ta'ala in repentance, a sincere repentance. So what is meant by a sincere repentance or a true repentance? Sadrul Afadil Sayyid Muhammad Naimuddin Murad Abadi alayhi rahmah, he writes that true repentance is that which is reflected through the actions of an individual, meaning the signs of that repentance are seen in the conduct of that individual. His life is full of obedience and worship and he refrains from sinful actions. This is a true repentance. So if someone wants to know, how do I know that my repentance was true? If one was sincere when he returned to Allah subhanahu ta'ala in repentance, then his choices in life, the way he is living, his behavior will reflect that. Yes, meaning his worship will increase, his level of adherence to the Quran and Sunnah or obedience will increase, and his passion or his care when it comes to refraining from sin, this will also be apparent in his behavior. If someone says that he has performed a sincere repentance, but he's still transgressing and it's very open and public, then this in itself is evidence that he was not blessed with sincere repentance. Sincere repentance is apparent in the actions of an individual. Now I would like to share with you a different aspect or different element of repentance which is attributed to our beloved Prophet our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam once said, Wallahi inni la astaghfiru Allah wa atubu ilayhi fil yawmi akthara min sab'ina marra. He sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, By Allah, indeed, I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu ta'ala and I turn to Him in repentance more than 70 times daily. In another hadith mentioned by Imam Muslim, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, tubu ila Allahi wa astaghfiruh. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance and seek forgiveness from Him. Fa inni atubu fil yawmi ilayhi mi'ata marra. Indeed, I turn to Him in repentance a hundred times daily. What is meant by our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance? Our scholars have given various answers to this and one particular answer is that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam would do this as an expression of humility. Yes, this was the way of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam since seeking forgiveness is an act of worship. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam being the most complete in his obedience, in his humility, in his submissiveness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he expressed this by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this humility and expressing humility through seeking forgiveness. Another point which is mentioned is that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did this to teach the ummah that they do not abandon seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they realize and try to understand the significance of this act of worship. Alama Badruddin Aini Hanafi, he quotes different opinions about what repentance is. He says, according to many of the scholarly predecessors, repentance is remorse, is regret. So this feeling of regret, this in itself is repentance. Another point which he mentions is that this firm intention of not returning to sin, this azm of not returning to sin, this is tawbah. A third opinion mentioned by him is to abandon or to refrain from sin, this is also tawbah or repentance. And as a fourth point he mentions that the previous three combined, that in itself is the essence of repentance. Mufti Ahmad Yarkhan Naimi alayhi rahmah, he explains that tawbah and istighfar, meaning repentance and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an act of worship, just like the prayer, just like fasting. And due to the fact that this in itself is an act of worship, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam would perform this act of worship often, meaning he would seek forgiveness from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often, for it in itself is an act of worship. So we know about the essence of repentance in terms of what the 
elements of repentance are for acceptance in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have some idea of what a sincere repentance is. We have an idea of how our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam would repent daily to teach his ummah as an expression of humility. Finally, I would like to share with you some signs of a true repentance. Yes, how does one know or which signs show that an individual has performed a sincere repentance? Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he says that a sincere or true repentance has six signs. Number one, the individual is remorseful, has regret for his previous sins. Number two, he makes a true intention, a firm intention not to return to the sin. Number three, any obligations that he abandoned, those obligations are fulfilled. For example, if an individual missed his obligatory prayers, then making up for those obligatory prayers will be a sign of true repentance. Number four, if he has violated the right of an individual, he fulfills that right. Number five, the growth of the body which occurred through haram means, through an unlawful means, meaning through unlawful wealth or the consumption of something unlawful, one starves himself. Yes, and the expression used by him is that the body, that growth, it goes back. He literally loses that fat and that flesh and he literally goes back to almost bare bones. And then the growth of the body occurs with pure and halal lawful means. It's a very deep point which he mentions, yes. So someone who was consuming haram, his toba or true toba is this, that he brings his body back to almost bone and weakens himself and loses that flesh which grew through that unlawful means. Then after losing all that flesh, he lets his body grow through halal means, meaning what he consumes now is lawful and pure. Number six, just as he enjoyed and took pleasure in fulfilling his desires and following his desires, he experiences enjoyment in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we become sincere and remain sincere in our repentance, that we remain steadfast upon a path of repentance. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often, whether we know of any sinful transgressions or we don't. We simply turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking forgiveness from Him, with this view that this is an act of worship, with this view that through seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will attain spiritual purification. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts in repentance. Keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah, let us all reflect From a sinful life, what can we expect? Return to Allah, let us all reflect